good morning as our chair has suggested me to focus on recommendation issue i'll try to do my best but as a background i have to say something well i mean with regard to here we are trying to link climate change water resources and food security and with regard to climate change there is consensus among the scientific community that earth is warming climate is changing and such change are human induced or anthropogenic increase emission of greenhouses greenhouse gas like uh, carbon methane nitrogen n2o nitroxide and other gases and their increasing concentration as the cause of anthropogenic climate change and and such change i mean such emission gg emission not only change temperature but it also change other parts of earth's chemical climate and also biological process against this background i have structured my presentation with evidence of climate change in south asia what are its risk and vulnerability of south asian countries its impact and implication on water resources agriculture and food security and finally i will try to propose some of the recommendation to reduce the risk of climate change well if we look at the available literature we found that earth has warmed by 0.74 degree celsius over the past 100 years sea level has risen globally by 10 to 20 mm during 20th century and snow cover has receded by 10% so this is the global i'm in scenario well let's look at what is the situation of in the south asian countries Bangladesh had observed increasing trend of about 1.1 degree Celsius in May and 0.5 degree Celsius in November from 1985 to 1988. With regard to temperature, similarly, there is some sort of decadal rain anomalies above the long term average since 1960s. India has also experienced a temperature rise of 0.6 0.68 degree Celsius. with increasing trend in annual mean temperature and warming most pronounced during post monsoon winter and there is also i mean increase in the extreme rain in northwest during summer monsoon in nepal temperature has increased by 0.9 degrees celsius in himalayas and 0.4 degrees celsius in tarai and th there is no such distinct any long term trend in precipitation change in pakistan temperature has increased between 0.6 to 1 degree in coastal area since 1900 and there is some change in precipitations particularly in coastal belt in sri lanka temperature has increased by 0.16 and there is increased trend of precipitation in february and decrease decreasing trend in june and these are the observed i mean climate change in south asian countries well so, i mean so what could be the i mean what are the vulnerabilities in south asian countries well the first one is increase in temperature and extreme heat and global temperature is predicted to rise by 4 degrees degree celsius by 2020 by 2080 and this projection is quite consist consistent with the doubling atmospheric co2 concentration so i'll be talking in the 
with the assumption that, with the projection that global temperature, temperature would increase by 4 degrees Celsius. So in 4 degrees Celsius temperature, South Asian summer temperature are projected to increase by 3 degree to 6 degree Celsius by 2001. And the West Coast and Southern India as well as Bhutan and Northern, Mal Northern Bangladesh are projected to shift to new <coughs> high temperature climate. <coughs> And there will be unusual <coughs> unusually it is projected for sixty to eighty percent of northern hemisphere summer months in most part of the region. And it has also been projected that there will be an increase in average monsoon precipitations over decadal time scale. But there will be significant increase in interannual and interseasonal variability. It means the wet season would get wettier and the dry season would get drier. And there will be increased intensity of extreme weather events, including flood and tropical cyclones. And the projected increase in the seasonality of precipitation is associated with increase in number of dry days and droughts. In addition, increase, there will be increase in the river flow in the spring due to a stronger glacier and snow melt. And if, if, if you look at the geography of South Asian <laughs> countries, South Asian countries are situated between approximately zero degree to 25 degree north. Being close to equator, local sea level rise would be stronger compared to higher latitude. For South Asian countries, Particularly for coastal areas, sea level rise is projected to be approximately 100 to 110 centimeter by 2000, by 2100. Well, I mean, these, all these, I mean, two slides indicates that South Asian countries have observed significant change in temperature and precipitation. And such changes pose serious risks to agriculture production and water resources of the region, and which are already under pressure due to combination of various factors. So here the question is, what is it as, is at stake in South Asian countries? Okay, well, so I'm just skipping here. I'm skipping this. Yeah. But Slide and, and, and I'm just trying to look at the what is it at stake. I mean, South Asian countries is the most densely populated region, and it, it's home to more than 1.6 billion people. That is more than 20 percent of the global population. The unique geography of the region plays a significant part in shaping the livelihood of the people. Agriculture and rural economy are largely dependent on timely arrival of monsoon. More than 75% of the population depends on agriculture for daily subsistence and livelihood. And this sector is also a major source of employment for most of the South Asian countries. But most of the farmland are unirrigated, and farming is primarily based on rainfed I mean land. Uh, as a result, 
agriculture productivity is very low. South Asia, South Asia consists of majority of all poor, and majority of the people are living under below 1.25 dollar 1.25 per day. The prevalence of in food in education is significant, and more than 300 people are under nourished. And similarly, most of the people do not have safe drinking water. There is high prevalence of rain-fed farming, but fresh water withdrawal is increasing. Agriculture is the main user of fresh water, and about 70 million people live in coastal area that lie five meters less above sea level. And in 2010, more than 21 million people were affected by floods and landslides. I mean, these are the risk for South Asian countries. Well, what would be the implication of I mean, climate change on water resources in South Asia? Well, there will be a change in hydrological cycle. And that hydrological cycle would increase the risk of flooding, including more extreme precipitation, high risk river flow, glacial melt, melting of glaciers, increase intensity of the most extreme tropical cyclone and sea level change. And there will be, be reduced energy production. Well, in South Asia, there are two sources of energy production. One is hydroelectricity, and another is thermoelectricity. And because of high variability in river flow, there will be high risk or variability in electricity, hydroelectricity production. And with regard to thermal, I mean, while for cooling plants, we need I mean, fresh water. And if there is high temperature and drought, that may reduce electricity production. So because of this I mean, climate change, there will be a stretch on energy production. And, and another implication is there will be water stress for projected population of 2.5 billion in 2050 due to shrinking glacier, soil erosion, I mean, and, and pollution, water pollution, groundwater degradation. And it may result in tension over the use and control of water resources at local, national, as well as at regional level. With regard to the implication of cli climate change on food security and agriculture, there will be change in the demand and supply of water for agriculture, industry, agriculture use, industrial use, uh, and maybe for other uses. <clears throat> and this increased competition for water within and between sector will result in transferring water resources away from agriculture. Uh, and and agriculture, system, uh, agriculture system could get, I mean, lesser water for agriculture production. 
And another implication is there could be a decline in crop yields. And we have, I mean, many studies that shows decline. There is controversy, I mean, on whether, on the impact of carbon fertilizations, but still, we have I mean, studies that shows decline in crop yields, whether it is in wheat, rice, maize, because of, I mean, fluctuating temperature and fluctuating precipitations, and also shorter growing season. And another I mean, region for increased, I mean, declining crop yields would be the flood that results sediments deposition in the agricultural land, and, and that may result in deterioration in the quality of land and crop production. And because of the stress in food, there might be shift in the cultivation to lower cooler elevation where steep slopes are susceptible to landslides and unsuitable for agriculture. And, and at this point, I have taken from Pamida's article, as from her studies. And, and again, I mean, there would be most dramatic impact will be felt in arid zone and flood affected areas where agriculture is already at the edge. And, and it also may cause decline in agriculture biodiversity and also it might cause high cost of adaptations because we need to develop climate resistant seeds on the one hand and we need to invest in water infrastructure. Well, to address this risk and vulnerability, what could be the measures that needs to be adopted at national level. The first and foremost, I mean, the policy makers should internalize the challenge of water, food, energy nexus in policy framework and, and this nexus needs to be main streamed in development policy and strategy. And the second, since there is no additional water, the needed increase in food production must come through increased water productivity. And it can be done either extending the ill frontiers in areas where present yield is more close to potential yield or closing the yield gap where considerable yield gains can be achieved with modern technology <coughs> like rainwater harvesting, light irrigation, groundwater recharge. So <coughs> another I mean, measure we need to take is on conserving water and energy resources. <coughs> And another so many policy options would be to re-engage in agriculture for second generation green revolution through investment in agriculture, technology, in water infrastructure and management, and also investment in policies and institution building. The fourth option would be to build resilient farming system through developing seeds which are heat or drought or salinity resistant and we also need to develop farming system that protects against pest and diseases, that reduces use of pesticide and herbicide 
and also reduce <coughs> machinery and fuel cost. And another, we need to promote community based adaptation through community seed bank, a small irrigation system, and also some biodiversity conservation. And we also need to move beyond the farm paradigm. That is, use of technology, particularly nanotechnology, I mean, for food production, and maybe also production of food in controlled environment. And with regard to regional level, we need to recognize that transboundary nature of climate change and river system needs regional cooperation, and we also need to create synergy among the national initiatives. And at the I mean, major would be we need to strengthen the SARC platform to address climate change issues. With SARC climate fund, climate fund and research center, that is basically for I mean, financing the climate related activities and I mean, research. And we also need to establish the early warning system. Again, we need to have proactive sharing of information on the hazards such as plots, droughts, and increasing risk pooling insurance facility. And we also need to have regional I mean, approach in managing the water and the related natural resources on the basis of transboundary river basin, which could be for mutual benefit. And also, we need to, to focus on its sustainable I mean, use. And we also need to operationalize and strengthen SARC food bank and gene bank. We also need to reform regional trade by addressing tariff, by reducing sensitive list, addressing tariff, non-tariff barriers, and promoting trade facilitation. We also need to enhance collaborative activities and mutual learning in agriculture research, including transboundary disease, and also climate-friendly technology. And in conclusion, I would say South Asia is highly vulnerable to climate change. And climate change, its impact on food and water security affects socioeconomic condition of the region, and the impact will be felt more by low income and rural population. National level initiatives needs to be collaborated by regional actions to address problem of climate change, water, water resources, and food security. Thank you. Thank you for your kind attention. Of